So the fifth ingredient of our uh, theology of science comes right out of the wisdom to tradition of scripture, and particularly from the book of Job. Um, and it's the recognition that in the structure of the physical world, we have this admixture, this tension between order and chaos. And, in f and, and the wonderful way in which order arises out of chaos um, rather than from combating it. So the wealth of creation story material, and there are incidentally well over 20 or 30 creation stories throughout scripture. The Genesis 1 and 2 versions are by no means the only or indeed the first or the most basic creation stories. Um, more commonly throughout the Psalms and prophets and the wisdom literature, there are uh, little tropes of creation stories where God lays the foundations of the earth, sets the boundaries, um, as we met that in, in um, uh, Proverbs 8, didn't we, between the sea and the earth. It's a bringing order out of chaos Job's argument throughout the cycles of speeches with which he painfully uh, discusses, argues with his so-called friends um, that it is not because of his sin that he is suffering. His argument, his accusation of God, is that God is as out of control of the natural world as he is of the moral world. That is why... Um, Job brings so much natural metaphor of earth, mountains, living things to bear in his arguments reflected in those of the friends and incidentally why when Yahweh finally answers him the Lord also chooses the natural world um, in which to cast the answer to Job's question. But Job's accusation can be summed up um, in this for example from chapter 12. He, he's talking to his friend about, about God's chaotic lack of control of nature he holds back the waters there is drought he lets them loose they overwhelm the earth so god is capricious with nature as he is with his moral law now we'll see what hap what uh, yahweh has to say to that but uh, i've noted very strong resonances with some wonderful science today for example um, statistical mechanics is that area of physics that deals with materials, with complex um, aggregations of billions and billions of atoms and molecules. It is quite extraordinary, for example, that we can make predictions about the pressure and temperature of the air that I'm breathing in this room without a chance in heaven of knowing or predicting the trajectories of the molecules that make up the air. Well, how, how is that? And it turns out that conceptually, even mathematically, um, we can bring the order of high-level concepts like velocity, pressure, temperature, out of a chaotic underpinning of low-level seething of random motion. This is never so true as it is in the science of life itself, where the mechanics of the cell and the assembly of the complex aggregations of proteins in our cell membranes and within the structure of our living cells themselves, the structures that give life its function and order, do so in a molecular background of continuous, thermal, turbulent, uh, fluctuating chaos. So it turns out that uh, freezing that chaos out is literally freezing. Um, freezing kills life. Life only emerges from a seething um, underbelly, if you like, of chaos. Um, and that's true and affirmed in the biblical wisdom tradition in a very interesting way.